Thank you for having us today. Uh, we're going to go through a quick rundown of our team so that you know who we are, and then we'll get right into our analysis. Uh, my name is David Watkins. I'm an assistant director in the International Affairs Department at IUPUI. I did my undergrad at the University of Cincinnati in International Affairs. I'm Jason Freed. I'm undergrad at IU Bloomington and currently working at Walker Information as an assistant project manager. I'm Katherine Alexander. I have a BS from Indiana University in Bloomington. I am currently the operations manager of Axis Forensic Toxicology on the north side. Mike Dungis, uh, civil engineering undergrad at the University of Dayton, currently a project manager at Bowen Engineering. And so uh, Mike and I are going to be doing uh, the presenting today, uh, but we just want to make clear that everybody contributed equally to the, the analysis, the conceptualization, the presentation, and uh, Jason and Katie are, are more than happy to answer any questions as needed. So today we're going to go through uh, our recommendation. That's going to be the first thing that we um, uh, present to you. And we're going to kind of back into how we arrived at that recommendation with uh, an overview of the options and then a look at the evaluation that we've done on the given options and a final conclusion. It would be our goal that uh, you will have confidence in the ability um, and the analysis that we've done and our ability to perform any transaction that, that you ultimately choose to undertake. Um, we would hope that uh, we could earn your business and then um, whichever path or option that Titan chooses to go down, um, that we would be able to uh, uh, be your partner in that decision. So. Our recommendation is to, uh, as much as possible, keep, keep the company together, keep Titan together. Um, there are a number of options that, that we considered that uh, obviously included uh, a sale of subsidiaries or partial ownership stakes. And as much as possible, our preference was to uh, keep as much of the company together without selling subsidiaries at a discount um, and to retain as much ownership as possible while getting through what we see as a short-term liquidity crisis. So how did we arrive at that conclusion? We put together a, uh, a forecasted Titan pro forma, um, which is in your, your appendices, and we ran each of the options that we were presented with, plus two additional options that we'd like uh, uh, for you to consider today. Those options are listed on the, on the screen here that you can see. Um, the sell Jupiter, a partial sale of Jupiter, um, selling Saturn with preferred uh, uh, equity. We considered Pluto with a larger infusion of preferred equity. Then we also took a look at two options that we think um, can kind of fill the gap between where Titan is today um, at the end of 2018 and when Pluto starts uh, generating significant revenues. You mentioned it's yes. a short-term liquidity crisis. Yes. What's your definition of short term, and, and why is it only short term? It's yeah, been so um, for a while. knowing that it's the end of 2018 right now, and Pluto is going to launch um, at the beginning of 2019, additional revenue is going to be coming in. Um, we're going to get to it a little bit later, but there is a debt schedule that we created um, in the binder that I'll talk about in a little bit, and we evaluated the new cash flows coming in from Pluto startup um, with the current debt being. Um, the current debt in place, and we think that you really only got like a month or two issue that you got to deal with, rather than worrying about taking on 200, get, trying to get 200 million dollars to refinance the loan. We think it's a much shorter term. You got to make the next couple payments until those new cash flows start coming in. And so, hence, you'll see at the bottom of this uh, of this graph, we're going to recommend um, that Titan take on additional debt to cover this 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 gap. Um, rather than selling a subsidiary or giving away any ownership. And we think that based on the, the debt that we know is on Titan's books, that there uh, is some additional excess debt capacity to, to perform this transaction. So just as a general overview, so we're, we're all on the same page, um, a partial or a full sale of Jupiter are options one and two. Um, option three is a sale of Saturn uh, with an infusion of um, preferred equity into Pluto. Option four is a larger uh, injection of preferred equity into um, Pluto. Option five we identified as bankruptcy, and then as I mentioned, six and seven, we want to take a look at these two options that we, we'd like to present to you in addition to the ones um, that you recommended for us to take a look at. Are you willing to underwrite that debt on, on the last option? I'm sorry? Are you willing to underwrite that debt? Um, that's not something that we took a look at, I don't think. 
Um, but well, we are confident enough in the analysis that we would back it. If, if we did a there. very, we, we attempted to do a, a very conservative analysis on, on performance in the next year um, to, to get to that, that recommendation. So just to cover um, all of our options, option one and two, as I mentioned, sale, uh, full sale or a partial sale of Jupiter. Um, both of these offers from uh, uh, Charger Capital we do think are um, at a discount. Um, if, if, if Titan were to choose to, to get rid of Jupiter or, or to um, sell 40% stake, we do think it would be um, below our valuation. The valuations that you see on the, on the graph here, um, the range, the low range being the EBITDA multiple, the high range being a perpetual growth model on the DCF, and then the offers that we've received, we would expect the full offer to be closer to uh, 800 million, and uh, hence a 40% a offer to be closer to the 300 million mark. For that reason, we would not recommend pursuing this strategy. Okay, so, so you can negotiate that. Um, the, we've 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 operated on the assumption that we're not going to negotiate those prices. Obviously, if if Charger is open to a counteroffer, then then that would be a a, a way to further the analysis and, and get to a, a better recommendation. So you don't have a like a proposal on, on how we could do that best. We do not. We've we chose to go a, a slightly different route than selling off a, a portion of the company at a discount. Okay, so to keep moving, option three: sell Saturn. To Bronco, uh, this brings in 140 million of the 200 that you were asking to to get to refinance the debt. So, in addition to selling uh, Saturn to Bronco, you would also need to take on uh, a preferred equity partner in Pluto um, because the Saturn offer is up for 140 million. We think the 140 million is a, is a is a good price. It's 20 times the current EBITDA, um, which is which is which is good for you. However, you're selling a part a strategic part of your business. And it doesn't get you to the 200, so you're going to have to bring in another partner with Pluto, um, which they may, you know, a financial partner like that may not have the same long-term strategic goals that you do. Um, you can see the analysis on the bottom left here um, of what what that deal looks like with the uh, the private equity firm for the 100 million. Um, you're paying uh, a pretty good a pretty good price to get that 100 million dollars now, um, and if you achieve your goals or exceed them. Um, they're likely to take 40% of the company um, when they convert the pre if they if they choose to convert the preferred shares to common shares. So for that reason, uh, we don't think option three is a good option. So option four, uh, sell a greater portion of Pluto to the private equity firm. Kind of a very a very similar analysis, but with 200 million dollars versus the 100. Um, again, we don't think we th we think it's there's greater value in it than than what they're offering. They're getting a good deal, um, and you're giving up more of, of, of a business that you've invested a lot of time and effort in um, and that has great growth potential for the future. Well, what is the, I mean, on option four, what, what's the, I, I, like your other, what, what's the multiple? I mean, $200 million for Pluto seems like a pretty good, pretty good multiple, right? Am I missing something there? So uh, the $200 million is for, once it converts, if it converts, is a 40% stake. Um, on this graph, you'll see the uh, EV value of uh, over a billion dollars there. Um, so we, that's what we were analyzing that against. And that was based on a, a discount of their, of their future revenues. So with the project, projected growth, if they, if they decide to take their money back out of the business in seven years, um, you, would, you would be obligated to pay them $442 million. If growth occurs as planned, you own, uh, they take 40% of the company, which we anticipate to be worth about 466. Yeah, but I got, I got a $200 million problem right now. I mean, well, and, and our recommendation is, is going to be that you don't, we're not going to go for a full 200 million. Okay. Um, we're going to try to, to meet those, those debt obligations in a slightly different way. Okay. Okay. So option five, bankruptcy. This is the least attractive option in our opinion. Um, you're going to have additional costs come in. You're going to lose part of the control of the business. Um, filing for, for Chapter 11, you may be forced to pick one of these reorganization options. Um, so we don't even want to go down this road or spend much time on it. We think it's the least attractive option um, and not a good one. So option six, this is what we're recommending. So looking at knowing what we know about the, the large debt you took on to develop Pluto, uh, the $2.5 billion loan taken four years ago um, has an outstanding balance of $2 billion. 
we created a debt schedule, which is on pretty, page 37 of the appendices, um, that show at 8.7% at interest rate on a 15-year loan, uh, the monthly payments are $25 million. So that's kind of what we're basing this $100 million off of. You need enough to get by long, for the next long, couple months. Sorry, how long was the loan? Your, your the term? Yeah. 15 years. Yeah. Okay. So based off of what we know the, the, uh, the original loan was worth, where it's at now, um, and the interest rate, that's how we came up with that. So knowing you just need a little bit to get by for these next couple months until... 15 years is your amortization period? No. That's your rate, guys. 15% mezzanine loan, right? Am I reading that right? So, no, so two different, time. two different, two different things. Oh, oh, that's good. Sorry. Year yeah, loan. yep. We're talking about the original 2.5 billion at, loan. At 15 percent. At 8.7 percent. Okay. Oh, okay. What we were presented with was that you know the the current loan value um, okay. today after four years of payment was two billion, um, and that the original loan was 2.5 billion. So we we did make some assumptions to get to what uh, uh, the debt payment would be month to month. So knowing what that debt payment is, what the future cash flows from Pluto are going to be, a recommendation to take on an extra, an extra $100 million in, in mezzanine debt, that's the one that's at 15%. For five years, the cash flows work out that you'll be, in, you'll be positive for this first year. Margins will be a little tight until you gain the additional customers in year two. But when that additional cash flow comes, starts coming in, um, year two, year three, um, it's going to grow pretty handily. So Where's the other $100 million? We're that's saying, what we're saying. We're saying you only need 100 million. You don't need to, the 200 is the to refinance. We need 200. To refinance. We don't think you need to refinance. We think with 100 million, an extra 100 million dollars, you'll be able to make the payments on the original loan until Pluto kicks off, and then you'll have additional cash flows coming in, and you'll be able to meet both loan payments until they're paid off. The bank has already made a concession. It says that it says we'll allow this amortization to be restructured if you make a 200 million dollar payment. Mm -hmm. And we don't think you need to restructure. Yep, and we don't think that that trying to find 200 million by selling off a, a subsidiary or giving away ownership um, puts G uh, Titan in a long-term position so for for maximum about growth. The bank and, uh, throwing us into the yeah. No, we think that we're going to be able to make the regular debt payments with this strategy. And knowing knowing the 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 current EBITDA of 600 million mm -hmm. and the debt capacity of called six times EBITDA, knowing that you have $2 billion on debt right now, you have room to take on additional debt. So we, we are saying the bank has offered, if you give us $200 million, if I'm the bank, the bank is saying if you give us $200 million, we will uh, uh, kind of restructure your, your amortization in the future. We're saying we'd like to step back and say we don't think that we can come up with that $200 million, but we are going to we take can on additional debt to make the regular payments before any kind of refinancing or restructuring of the loan. You mentioned you had a conservative view of the uh, Pluto. Yes, we did. So we took the, um, the given attrition rates, the hopeful attrition rates, and we averaged them to come up with uh, the, the future revenue streams for Pluto. And then in addition to that, we discounted those revenues by 25%. So we feel there's a pretty good cushion in there um, for the growth of Pluto if all of the, if the, attrition, the hopeful attrition rates don't work out. Um, there is a little bit of cushion. If they do work out, this deal looks even sweeter. Do you think you're the bank that's willing to give us 100 million? I'm yes, sorry. and we think, uh, and again, we think based off of the, EB, the current EBITDA of Titan at 600 million, and knowing that you've currently got 2 billion on, the, on debt, that's, that's only, that's less than, than, than four times EBITDA for a debt structure. So we think there is some capacity there. Uh, to go get additional mezzanine debt at 15%. Not that it'll be easy, and it maybe, as we mentioned, it'll come with um, some other kickers or, or, or warrants or something like that, but that we think that this is a worthwhile option to take a look at. So for the sake of time, we're going to move on to option seven. Kind of a similar strategy in that we don't think you need $200 million. Um, We said, well, if you just sell Saturn to Bronco, don't take on the preferred, the preferred equity for Pluto. Just do the sale for $140 million. Um, you could accomplish the same goal with a little bit of extra cushion. Again, we think you need 100 million, not 140, and this gives away a strategic part of your business. So we did want to mention it. Don't think it's a great option, but it is something that's out there um, in the event that you're not comfortable with with just 100. So this is, are you saying this is your second choice? Yes, yes, sir. So taking a look at all of the options in, in total, um, 
what we've gone through is a financial analysis. And as we said, you know, some of these options that, that we considered were selling subsidiaries at a discount um, or giving away ownership at a discount. Uh, and in the couple of the options, the preferred equity is essentially uh, paying debt with, with what is, in effect, more debt that comes with ownership. So we are trying to find a solution that allows us to maybe take on the money that we need to make these debt payments without giving away any ownership or selling a subsidiary at a discount. That's the financial side. We also wanted to consider, if you'll recall from when we, we presented to you uh, uh, two years ago, um, that we had a, a scoring matrix for a, a qualitative analysis of the options. Um, we have each of these, these strategic factors weighted. Uh, those are subjective weightings that we have assigned. If we were to work with you on this, this decision, we would uh, uh, use your weightings. Um, you can see the weightings as we have them. We ranked either, each of the options, multiplied it by the weighting to get a score. And as was pointed out two years ago, a high score in the risk factor is a low risk. We're looking for the highest score. Um, so mezzanine debt having what we, what we believe to be the, the best long-term shareholder value. Um, with bankruptcy being the worst. However, mezzanine debt has a uh, higher risk, hence the score is lower, than compared to, say, just selling a subsidiary like Jupiter. So we wanted to take into, effect, in, into account those qualitative factors um, because there may be other preferences like strategic fit or management preference or risk if the board is not willing to take on the risk of you know, uh, more debt to pay for debt then we can obviously rescore in conjunction with, with, with your recommendations and, and what you're looking to do with Titan um, to, to, to get an outcome that it, it go across all these factors, shareholders' value, strategic fit, is the best for Titan. So given that, our conclusion is that we do think that this is a short-term cash flow problem and that uh, the $200 million that the bank wants, the options that have been presented to get that $200 million, uh, are not options that we would like to pursue um, or we think that you should pursue. And so we've presented uh, uh, two other options that we think can get you through this, this uh, hole in, in, the, in the cash to the point where Pluto begins generating revenues, adding to the cash flows, and allows uh, Titan to make those normal debt payments. Um, we think, based on our projected Titan pro forma, that the long-term growth of Titan is strong and that, the, uh, uh, that this option provides the best shareholder value and long-term value for Titan. Question for you. Yes. This whole uh, scenario, as I understand it, uh, depends on Pluto cash flowing on schedule? Correct. What if it doesn't? Well, I, I actually might let Mike address that because we did, we did build in some very conservative uh, estimates of that. Yeah, so kind of... On top of what I had already mentioned about the attrition rates and kind of averaging the hopeful and uh, the the kind of the, the existing expectations, average those taken and then taken 25% off of that as well, we knocked that down. We also feel that the 100 million still gives you a cushion. Um, looking at current 600 million dollars in EBITDA divided by 12 months is roughly 50. The the two new if you get your existing loan payments which is about $25 million, and the new $100 million loan that we're suggesting adds about uh, a little over $3 million to that. So your, your new combined loan payments per month are $28 million. You've got over 50 in EBITDA. We think there's some cushion there um, in, case that, in case Pluto either launches a little late or um, mm -hmm. customers aren't, bringing in customers isn't quite as high as at the beginning. Uh, we think there's some room there, is there um, for error. consideration error. for, so you're saying 50 million, I see where you're going with 50 million EBITDA covering your debt payment, but what about running our business? So capital expenditures, you, do you take that into consideration as yes, well? Yes, those and are included. Um, you'll see within each um, option in the, in the appendices, we did a pro forma for Titan. Um, there was a lot of assumptions there, being that we didn't know, we don't have a whole lot of information on the other subsidiaries. We kind of averaged what we knew about the other ones, um, about, about the subsidiaries we know about, um, mm -hmm. to look at the other ones as a whole. But um, CapEx is figured in um, in every scenario. We ran a, a complete pro forma for each option to see which gave the, the greatest in equity value. And in terms of Pluto performing, we, we did discount that quite heavily. How did you come up with 8.7%? Um, 
knowing that uh, a few years ago when we talked to you, that was kind of the current uh, senior debt um, that was available. It was. Uh, now, now we're in yeah, but this is the this is the original loan that you took on the two point five billion a couple years ago. But you're assuming that we're going to get the same rate on the next hundred million. No, the next the next hundred million is at a fifteen percent. It's mes debt. We are assuming that it'll be a much higher interest rate because of the riskiness of the of the uh, offer. Yeah, and Correct. it's unsupported. Right. So, I guess back to the Pluto question: how, how much can the cash flows out of that? Oh, <laughs> time. We're done, done. Thank you okay, very much. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.